Hello, Lee Pace here from Farmington, Connecticut. Today, I'd like to talk about something new and exciting. And this is the concept of segmental meniscus transplantation. As we are all aware, there is a significant burden of meniscus injury in this country and around the world with societal costs ranging from 500 million to 5 billion annually. This is due to the historical treatment of these meniscus tears to include mainly partial meniscectomy. Although it does provide good short-term results, the rate of osteoarthritis is proportional to the amount of meniscus removed. So there has been a large shift in thinking and practice to save the meniscus. Over the past decade or so, there's been a lot of focus and energy on innovating new techniques and new products for meniscus repair, as well as research to study its outcomes and feasibility. Here's an example of a complex lateral meniscus tear, which in the past would have been meniscectomized, but now with products such as the knee scorpion, we can now perform a very reliable repair. Here's another example of a more complex posterior horn medial meniscus tear in which there are two separate tears present. In the past, this would have been at least partially meniscectomized. Nowadays, we can do a robust and reliable repair. This is an inside out technique using the zone navigator. And this also went on to complete healing. In fact, these meniscus tears are in the same patient and she's doing great. However, we do encounter the problem of meniscus deficiency. We have some meniscus tears that are chronic or just too complex to fix, and we are left with a situation where someone has a subtotal loss of meniscal tissue. For many years now, we have been able to successfully perform and improve our techniques with meniscus transplantation to help with this very uh, difficult problem of meniscal deficiency. We have now identified sort of a new problem when it comes to meniscus preservation, segmental deficiency. There are some meniscal injuries that behave as a complete meniscectomy, where you still have a lot of native meniscal tissue left, but you have a defect present that makes the meniscus behave as if it was a complete meniscectomy. A classic example is here with a segmental radial defect. You can perform a complete meniscus transplantation here, but it requires a removal of a lot of native meniscal tissue. And in this example here, you can see that I had to remove the entirety of the posterior and anterior horns of this lateral meniscus so that I could perform a complete meniscus allograft transplantation. So the question is, is can we perform a focal segmental meniscus transplantation? So let's now dive into the science that's been looked at so far with this question. First off, let's look at what's been done with biomechanics. This is a study out of Kentucky looking at an animal model. This is a porcine model in which 12 knees were evaluated by creating a segmental radial defect in the medial meniscus. There were three states, intact, the segmental defect, and then the grafted defect. An axial force was applied in differing degrees of knee flexion, and they collected data on mean and peak pressure, peak pressure location, and peak pressure area. The results are fortunately not surprising. What they showed was that in the segmental defect model, there was increased pressure, a mean pressure and peak pressure, as well as a decreased peak pressure area in the segmental defect, and that by performing the segmental replacement, that it restored all of these parameters back to normal. So from a biomechanical status, this can be performed. Now, the next step is biology. Will this heal? Can you get an allograft uh, meniscus to heal on the borders successfully? In this animal study from the same group looking at segmental meniscal transplantation in a sheet model, they were able to evaluate the histology at the borders of the native and transplanted meniscus at uh, 90 days. Now, interestingly, three sheep were euthanized early, and so they were able to be evaluated at 40 days, which created sort of an internal control for the sheep that were evaluated at 90 days. What they found was very interesting, that even in the sheep that were euthanized early, there was evidence of partial healing, particularly at the areas of the side-to-side uh, -side repair. And then in the sheep evaluated at 90 days, this healing trend continued. And we should take these results in context because the repair construct that was performed was rather basic and did not take advantage of all of the tools that are currently available. And further, it was performed in a rather hostile animal model in which there was no ability to have protected weight bearing after the meniscus transplantation. Now to take the next step, there is now a published technique for performing an open segmental meniscus transplantation in a human. And this technique comes from Matt Proventure's group with some pictures shown here. You can see the segmental grafted defect in the medial meniscus here with a robust fixation construct. So now let's talk a little bit about indications. 
Obviously, this is early, and so these indications will be evolving. However, we think that prime indications for this include segmental defects between two to four centimeters due to either failed prior repairs or irreparable segmental defects. Classic examples of this would be radial tears or uh, irreparable posterior horn tears of the medial meniscus. It would require intact meniscal roots, as well as appropriate cartilage, stable ligaments, and neutral alignment. The next step in the evolution of this is reliable arthroscopic techniques using some of the tools that are available to us to include the zone navigator, the knee scorpion, and the fiber stitch. And in fact, these are pictures uh, from my work in the lab successfully performing an all arthroscopic segmental meniscus transplantation of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. There is still a lot of work to do. We do need further animal and biomechanical data, and we wanna follow that up with clinical studies looking at further indications, patient reported outcomes, rehab protocols, and expected functional levels after surgery. In conclusion, segmental meniscus transplantation represents the next step in meniscus preservation and restoration. We have lots of work to do. However, I think we're all looking forward to some very exciting results.